What's up guys, it's BT here, and we got another banger 65% keyboard today. This is the Mercury 65, which is gonna be dropping today once this video drops in a couple of hours. I want to get this video out so that you guys have a chance to get in because they are first come, first serve. There's 375 of them and they're coming in at $430. So if you've been in the market for a 65% aesthetic keyboard, you came to the right place. The Mercury 65 is coming at you from Rocket Keyboards. They'll provide you with the case, and inside that there's the rocket PCB nice and clean with the rocket space theme which we will see throughout this entire keyboard it's available in a hot swap or solder version you know me I gotta have that solder version also in the case you'll find the JST connector and daughter board some gaskets yes this is gasket bounded hallelujah in my packaging they gave me three different badges for the right hand corner y'all know i'm a huge fan of those to me a 65 percent keyboard without a badge up at the top right is like having chick-fil-a without the sauce you just gotta have it or you know you can equate it to a knob okay i'll settle for a knob it's an easy way to breathe new life into an old keyboard or match a theme with the color of the badge last but not least you'll find the case wrapped in a microfiber cloth this case is very clean it reminds me of a iron 165 but a little less aggressive. And then the outer row and arrow keys are separated from the main keyboard keys. Kind of like we saw on the Alpine, which I really dig. It's a seven degree typing angle, just like the Iron 165. I go as far as to say, this is like a baby Iron 165. And you'll see why, especially when you look at this bottom part and this part, it's like, it's like that same brass aluminum connection on the bottom here. Now, if I had one complaint, I do wish that the badge up at the top could be a little bit bigger. I feel like there's a lot of negative space around it up at the top right. Maybe they did this because there is a rocket on the badge, so it's kind of like you're floating in space and, and the space is vast and it's just huge and you're just a small spaceship in a, Okay, I'm gonna shut up now. Rocket Keyboards let me know that every bottom piece has been manufactured perfectly from every step to achieve the two-tone bottom engraving. Pieces cannot be re-anodized to fix blemishes or issues from factory. So units that have imperfection get scrapped to ensure all customers receive a flawless bottom piece. And they're saying this is what makes the Mercury 65 engraving so special. What they're saying is you can't change shit about this keyboard, all right? It's perfect as is. I looked on my copy of the keyboard and it looks pretty damn good, I must say. I couldn't find any imperfections or anything wrong with it, so kind of lives up to what they're talking about. It's got the planets on the bottom. On the back side of the case, there's this little brass back plate. Although I like the way this triangular shape looks. I'm not a huge fan of the three screws that they use to put it on the back. It just makes it look less clean and a little cluttered. And it just doesn't do anything for the overall aesthetic of the board. I think the Mod 65 spoiled me in that regard as their magnetic backplate was perfect because it just gave a more seamless and clean look. Now the top and bottom of the case are held together by eight screws and within the case, there's an aluminum plate. It's got a good amount of weight, especially for an aluminum plate. They do have other options like a polycarbonate, but I feel like aluminum is a good middle ground, especially if you wanna switch between tactiles and linear. The case is also gonna come in a black and also a E white as well if you're interested in those colors i really like the theme that i went with we'll talk about this more later on the bottom side of the top of the case there's one screw that screws in the badge the badge is available in a brass silver and rose gold and black my favorite is the brass personally especially with this navy i think if you were looking at a gmk set that's running right now gmk rudy would look sick on this keyboard the gases go into the cutouts around the top and bottom of the case i give them props for actually having the proper size of gaskets because recently some of the keyboards that i've gotten the strips have been way too long and i have to like jam them into the slots and it just feels like i'm doing something wrong these fit perfectly within the cutouts of the bottom and top of the case the switches i went with were the new lavender linears these have been highly recommended they came with Crytox Tool 5 grade zero lube and they were filled. This is my first time trying them, but word on the street is it's gonna have Tactile Gang in shambles. And then for stabilizers, we use the Duroc V2s and we just soldered everything. If you wanna know how to solder or how I solder normally, go check out my guide on how to solder your keyboard. Now after all that was done, I just connected the JST cable to the PCB and then screwed down the daughter board into the bottom of the case with the four provided screws. Be careful though, there's no real ledges on the JST cable 
cable to pull it out. The only way to pull it out is by the cables. I hate that. It feels like I'm going to snap the shit out of this. And before this video drop, I did mention that to Rocky Keyboards that that was something they might want to look into. So hopefully by the actual release of this keyboard, they're actually going to have a different JST connector. Once that's done, you just put the top piece onto the bottom one. Make sure everything is lined up with the gaskets. And with gaskets, you want to do a diagonal. So you want to do bottom left and top right and then crisscross and then do the middle ones and that should give you a pretty even gasket experience is that a thing gasket experience I don't know, I'm just making shit up at this point then I just paired it with GMK Mizu you guys know I know you guys love this set every time I post a set people go crazy and I feel like it works perfectly with this all right ladies and gentlemen you know what time it is it is time for that sound test so let's get it in There's a nice clack here. It's not harsh or loud, but instead like a nice subtle clack that no doubt is influenced by that gasket mount, which provides a good amount of flex. Now I'm not gonna lie. I thought this keyboard was gonna be hollow. I really did. I'm not gonna lie to you, okay? But it sounds full, right? It's almost like you just went to your grandmother's house. She fed you and came out with a big belly. It just, that, you just feel full. This keyboard is full, okay? Even though there's no foam or bottom case or foam in between or silicone in here it sounds really good and that's a sign of a really good keyboard another good sign of a keyboard before we get out of here is how much gap there is between the keycaps and the side of the case and on this one it's pretty consistent all the way around the keys there's a little bit of a difference here on this outer row here on the left side of it it's kind of big i kind of notice it it's kind of off so there is a little in my opinion a little imperfection there but nothing to be too concerned about and the, like i said the bottom is a real stunner it really reminds me of that iron 165 bottom that shiny aluminum and then you got the brass with it for the two-tone it just looks so nice the planets look dope so if you're in the space this is a no-brainer you got to pick up this keyboard or if you're somebody that just wants something with the outer row you want something that's similar to an iron 165 and they're two thousand dollars now I think this is an easy pickup in my opinion. One other thing that I'm seeing that I forgot to mention is this back port. It's actually really deep in there. This back piece plus the case, getting to the PCB is pretty far in. So that's another thing to take into consideration. It should fit most USB ports, but I think it gives a nice clean look once you push in a USB-C cable there. One other thing is that the lead time is eight months. I don't know if Mode 65 just spoiled me, but three months just sounds so good now. Even six months, eight months, dang. But I mean, if they're promising perfection on this bottom, might be worth the wait, all right? So in my opinion, 430, I think this is definitely worth it, especially the Iron 165 went for 450. Now they're going for $2,000. So I think this could be a real sleeper keyboard. Very fun to type on, very pleasant to type on, very flexible. They also have their new desk mat that's dropping as well. I think it looks pretty sick. Uh, and that'll go perfectly. This one has a four month lead time. So if you just want this as well, this could be a pretty good pickup. And the, the fabric on it feels very, very nice. The stitch edges look good. 2 p.m. Eastern time, be there or be square. Yeah, I think it's worth it. Definitely check this one out. All right, it has been your boy BT. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.